Hi, this is Tim Cant for Native Instruments. FM synthesis has a reputation for being hard to learn, but it really isn't. In the next five minutes or so, you're going to learn how to program FM patches from scratch. We're going to use Native Instruments FM8. If you don't have it already, just Google FM8 and the first link takes you to a page where you can download the demo version. So, FM8 looks complicated, doesn't it? It's really not that bad. In fact, we're going to head straight to the expert page. FM8 has six oscillators, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Only F is active by default. We can tell this because it's highlighted and we can see in the matrix its output level is set to 80. If we play the synth, we hear a sine tone coming from oscillator F. Let's make this a more interesting tone. Right click oscillator E to activate it, then left click it to bring up its parameters. This isn't going to change the sound we hear until we route oscillator E's output to oscillator F's input. The higher the routing level, the more oscillator E affects oscillator F's tone. Set the routing level to 50. Then sweep oscillator E's ratio parameter around. This changes the pitch of oscillator E relative to the note played, and thanks to the routing we just set up, it alters the timbre of oscillator F. If you use a really low value, literally a low frequency oscillation, you'll hear we get a vibrato effect. As the frequency of the modulating oscillator rises and heads into the audible frequency range, we get an increasingly harmonically complex tone. Set the ratio to 4. So, by changing the modulation level and the modulating oscillator ratio, we can create some harmonically complex static tones. Where things get interesting is when we change the level of the modulating oscillator over time, which we can do with its amplitude envelope. Drag the node at the top right hand corner of the envelope down and you've got a deep house bass sound. The modulation level starts high and drops, creating some rich harmonics at the start of the sound which quickly dissipate, leaving us with that basic sign tone as the level of the modulating oscillator reaches zero. Adjusting the ratio, modulation level and shape of the envelope lets us tweak the sound and that's frequency modulation synthesis in a nutshell. <laughs> It's also possible to use an oscillator to modulate itself, which is known as feedback modulation. Drag up on the slot directly above oscillator E and you'll hear that the changes in the harmonic content of the sound become more pronounced. If you use oscillator F to modulate itself, you'll hear we get a grittier overdrive style sound. Higher values can result in some nasty piercing tones, so it's worth taking the time to search for the sweet spot and develop the sound rather than just slamming values in at random. It's also possible to get plenty other types of sound using just a couple of FM8 oscillators. We're going to revert to the deep house bass, but this time let's turn the ratio of the modulating oscillator up to 15. Using inharmonic, or odd, ratio values gives us more of a bell-like tone. And if we shorten the decay of the envelope, we get something that sounds a bit like the tine of an electric piano, the basis of another classic FM sound. We can make it sound softer and more natural by turning the modulation level down.
or we can turn the modulation level back up and set the ratio to 6 to get a marimba-like pitched percussion sound. By using more oscillators and FM8 effects, you can create bigger and more impressive sounds. And now you understand how FM synthesis works, you might find it useful to take a look at FM8's wide variety of presets to see what's possible.